what I tried here to give you the karma and soul's relationship, basically. How we acquire karma? The we acquire karma is whenever in our mind vibration occurs. Whenever we think we are going to acquire karma. Okay? That is why, you know, Keval Gnani, what kind of the mind Keval Gnani has? Keval Gnani has a omani dasha. Omani. There is no mind. Keval Gnani has no mind. It is low bhavman. Not I'm talking dravyaman. They have a mind, physical mind is always there in the body. But Keval Gnani do not think. What is thinking? If you don't think, do you have a mind? Bhavman, reflection, no. Then what do you have? Only awareness. When you live in the present moment, when you live in the present moment, then it is fully aware. It's awareness only. This is what the message of Gita is. The message of Gita where Bhagavan Krishna tells Arjuna, you become knower and observer. Gita is one of the most universal book for all these kind of the concept. Okay. You become, can you become knower and observer, not the doer? Knower and observer, that state, it is called Amani Dasha, the mindless state. There is no mindless, but you are fully aware. Bhagwan Mahavir, when he left the home, okay, at the age of 30, for 12 and a half years, no, he traveled from, no, many, many places for 12 and a half years. He never uttered a single word, in a sense, okay? What did he do for 12 and a half years? We keep the record. How many upas Bhagavan Mavi did? Okay. How many chart? How many attam? How many attais? How many masakshamar? Okay. If you really look into it, for 12 and a half years, Bhagavan Mavi is, and we call it, Tapasvi Bhagwan Mavir. Okay, we call it Tapasvi Bhagwan Mavir. This is totally wrong. For 12 and a half years, Bhagwan Mavir did not do tapasya. It happened. See, don't misunderstand it now. There are two things. Bhagwan Mavir never took you know, any pachkan or attam or attai, okay, now I'm going to stay hungry for three days or I'm going to stay hungry for a month or four months or six months, whatever, okay? Bhagwan Mahavi did dhyan, meditation. And during the meditation, when he felt the body needs some nutrients. He just went because he did all meditation in jungle or outskirt of the village, not in the middle of the town or middle of the city. Okay, he, he stayed like uh, in the temples, not a Jain temple. They are all Hindu temple, which is situated generally outskirt of the villages, okay, or stayed in jungle, depends upon there. 
but whenever he felt like body needs some food nutrients he will just go to the nearby town take one meal and come back for 12 and a half years of sadhana ka that's where bhagwan mavi you no know, did for 12 and a half years he ate 349 meals means 340 he never ate more than one meal a day whenever he ate so you can imagine that for every 12 days he ate one meal in 12 and a half years he ate assuming you know just uh, 350 60 meals okay and that is that's the things one one meal only for for every 12 days on an average and what did he do the remaining time he did nothing but dhyan or meditation no what did he do in meditation no you can ask the question nothing to quieting down the mind that's what he did nothing else dhyan is the most important things in jainism and we forgot about it basically we talk little bit do you really find we do dhyan at all we can do tapascharya we remember all these tapascharyas okay pariyushan is there what bhagwan mahavir 12 and half years did the dhyan tapascharya happened okay that is the key things i am trying to say he did not do it okay the tapascharya happened he did the dhyan and even with the bhagwan's no all this sadhana kal it took 12 and half years of dhyan to quieting down the mind and after 12 and half years the result came he attained kevalna now his mind is completely under his control and his state is amani dasha he lived only in present kevali don't think of past kevali don't think of the future because if you think in if you think in the past or in the future then you have a man you have a mind that 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 mind is a bhav mind okay dravya mind is always there okay all the nerve systems and everything else is always there but this is the uh which this is the state that is what happened now uh so uh, what i am trying to do in these first few few charts what is a, what is mind mind is a thinking object in a sense in our bhav man reflective mind i'm to, i'm to, and we have always a reflective mind when you quieting down the reflective mind which you try to do whether you what whatever types of meditation you can do in jainism all right that is the main objective of the mind to do the meditation and slowly and slowly you increase the time to that meditation for the meditation or you need to sit at one asan okay you cannot just keep moving no sit here for 10 minutes and do another 10 minutes and 10 minutes no the thumb rule is like minimum 3 hours 
if you sit at one place without any pain, without any physical pain, that much you got to create that physical strength by yam and niyam and asana and pranayam. Asana and pranayam is significantly important in our life before we progress for meditation. You, you may niyam because you got to control yourself. Okay, that's that is means the anuvrats or mahavrat, whichever the place we are in. Okay, anuvrat and mahavrat and all virtues, virtuable conduct, which is niyam. Okay, whatever the niyam, we take it with the help of that and asana and pranayam to make sure you can sit at one place steadily at least three hours. Okay, that much you have to develop. Then and then you will become, you know, progressive in the spiritual. If your body is not, if, 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 if it is not like this, how are you going to progress in meditation? How are you going to do it? And you try and try and try, and you will know it. it is extremely difficult. So, now the types of Dravya Karma. Okay, I, I generally what I try to do is a Bhav Karma, and ultimately the mind, mind is a Bhav Karma. Okay, and this one is, <clears throat> That let me finish this chart and then we will take the question and answer. All right. Uh, the types of Dravya Karma, which you know that you know, we all have eight types of the karma. The four are Ghati Karmas, four are Ghati Karma. The Ghati Karma is the Moniya Karma, Gnana Varniya Karma, Darshana Varni, and Antraya. And the Agati karma are body related. Vedniya karma, Nam karma, Gotra karma, and uh, the Ayush karma. So you can see the four Gati karma, those obstructs the qualities and the power of soul. They are called Gati. Anything that affects the soul quality, they are all Gati Karma. And anything that is not related to soul, only to the body, these are body and surroundings, actually. Okay, the Vedniya Karma, which are Vedniya, Nam Karma, Gotra Karma, and Ayushya Karma. That is the lifespan determining. So you can just read the Moniya Karma, deluding Karma obscures the blissful nature of the soul or samyaktva, whatever the word you can say, all right? Samyak knowledge and samyak conduct of the soul. Gnana varniya karma obscures the infinite knowledge of the soul. Darshna varniya karma obscures the infinite perception of the soul. And antrai karma obscures the infinite power or energy. So, these are the qualities of the soul. These four things are qualities of the soul. But we have this karma, moniya karma, gnanavani, dashnavani, and antraya. That what this does, this karma does, that we don't have a infinite qualities, but we have a limited qualities. Okay, because of the moniya karma. If moniya karma, every bit is gone, then you are attaining a vitrak state. There is no rag, dvesh, nothing now. Okay, that is all the moniya karma. Okay, gnana varniya karma is gone. You attain the infinite knowledge and gnana varniya and darshna varniya, they go hand in hand. Once one is gone, the second is gone also. Okay. And 
that's why the you get infinite knowledge and infinite perception and at the same time at that time you are acquiring infinite power and energy that is kevala now when munia is gone you got the vitrak state rag vagarni okay that is called in gunstanak terminology those who have studied the gunstanak it's a 12th gunstanak when munia karma is gone and when gnana vani dashna vani antray karma is gone because they all leave at the same time you attain a kevalna and the remaining four which are aghati karma okay they are aghati karma when we die when our ayushya karma is over all four will be leave and we attain liberation no uh, body less all other things no we attain all the eight qualities in a full strength so let us go no, close here sejal yes uncle uh, uncle do you want to uh, stop sharing